Hey guys, welcome to this YouTube video and today I'll be showing you how I create my manga pages for my manga Savage. I'll be showing you the process on how I sketch the drafts out for my manga, how I ink it traditionally, and then how I scan it into my digital editing program called Medibang Paint Pro. So here I'm just showing you guys some examples of the manga pages, the finished pages from my first volume of my book. And then here is the latest page from my volume two. So basically a sneak peek for you guys. Yeah, so first off, I always uh, sketch out my pages using a blue lead pencil. Uh, the reason why I use blue lead pencils is because when, it, when it's scanned into the scanner, the scanner doesn't pick it up because there's like settings in the scanner that you can make it choose grayscale, which only scans black and white, the paper and the ink. And here I'm basically just using um, a ruler and inking out the panels of the page. And then I just add um, more detail back with the pencil. Yeah, and so right here I'm inking out the speech bubbles for the page. Um, I use like a, a brush pen to get like a bigger width of the speech bubbles. And right here, this is the ink I use. It's a calligraphy ink I got off of Amazon. Um, I'll put the link in the description too if you guys are curious. It works for me and it's like fluid. Uh, I think it just works well on this paper that I use. Oh yeah, and I also wanted to mention the paper size dimensions that I'm using. I am using 8.5 inches by 11 inches and I create the template on the page myself. Uh, getting the measurements of the bleed size the trim size guidelines was kind of difficult but i think to me it's more worth it and it works for me instead of rather buying the 40 pack 40 page pack uh deleter paper on amazon and this inking process is very labor intensive i would say If you're doing it traditionally like me, pen and nib on paper, just remember to take breaks, stretch out your wrist because, uh, yeah, it, you, it could cause future problems <laughs> and you don't want that. But um, I just prefer traditionally because that's what I'm used to. It just feels better to me. And if I were to do it digitally, it cannot replicate my style that I do traditionally. Um, if you prefer making manga digitally go you and uh to each your own because that's what you prefer and ultimately you have the undo button which you can correct your own mistakes you can there's like so much stuff you can do digitally that you can't do traditionally and the reason why i prefer traditional methods or i guess you could call it analog whatever you prefer but um there's a certain charm to it, you know, like dipping your nib back into the ink and like inking it onto the paper, letting it dry. That process seems so much more enrichful to me rather than staring at a screen and um, inking and doing your drafts like that. But uh, I'm still staring at a screen at the end of the day because I have to edit the page, but I'm just saying like the traditional methods, like getting my lines out, getting my characters, details, um, that just feels better to me. So at the end of the day, do what you prefer and what's most comfortable to you. Yeah, so right here I'm cleaning the nib of my dip pen because the ink dried out. But basically I pulled out um, a reference page from the previous page in the chapter to look at the bark texture of the tree. And then I'm just uh, coloring in the mask of the characters because I feel like those small areas is way harder to select into the digital program that I'm gonna scan it into later. And I think it's easier if I just get the smaller details here on the physical page than rather later on. But you can always uh, do like full ink out in the digital software as well. 
And here um, I'm adding like cross hatching, hatching details onto the page because that's easier to do on the actual physical page than rather doing it digitally in the program. I also wanted to say if you're hearing background noise, I'm doing this from my bedroom and I have um, noisy siblings in the background. So yeah, I'm too lazy to go anywhere else to do a voiceover. I'm just doing it in bed. And I also wanted to say for my style, I really like to emphasize clothing wrinkles because I feel that they are very dimensional in shape. And to achieve that, I add cross hatching and hatching to the the wrinkles and like the indentations of the clothing. I just feel that that shows more depth and it just, I guess it enhances your art. Yeah, so here I've scanned it into the program, the digital editing program I use. It's called Medibank Paint Pro. It's free and I recommend it. It works for me. Um, I'm able to add screen tones, text, add corrections, and export and all that. It works for me. Uh, I'll also put the link in the description just in case anyone wants to try it out for themselves. Uh, so here I'm correcting the mistakes I did on the physical paper. Uh, there's like obviously some inking mistakes like yeah for the speech bubbles there and for the hats and all the other textures I'm just fixing it right now because it I don't think it looks that good I keep some mistakes because it looks natural but I don't want it to look too digitally like made if that makes sense I also just want to say this process takes a very long time. Um, if you ask why I do it, uh, I think it's worth it. And, and when I when I first saw my book as a like physical book and it was in my hands, that was a dream come true. And if anyone else is waiting for that moment, you have no idea how good it feels to be holding the actual book in your hand. And that's honestly why I keep on doing this because that feeling of holding like your finished product in your hand is it's just different. Like it's like all your hard work paid off and like a dream come true to be honest. It's like I, I don't even know. It just felt so special and just like wow, you know. Yeah, and so for this panel, um, I didn't realize uh, I made it like extra thicker. So I had to like shrink it down. Yeah, it's on me. I just forgot to look like for the thickness of the panel. Yeah, and for right here, I tried using like the, um, I don't know what tool it's called, but it like automatically slants when you draw to get like the right angle. And it, it ended up not working for me, so I just did it manually. 
and uh, keep in mind I'm doing this with all I'm doing all of this with my mouse I do have a drawing pad but uh, I did not feel like taking it all out and setting it up so I just use my mouse and my mouse works fine to be honest Yeah, and so for here, I'm correcting the eye. I wanted the pupils to be bigger and I wanted to add more eyelashes because uh, doing that with a nib pen is kind of difficult to be honest, but uh, yeah, so that's why I'm correcting it digitally. Oh yeah, and also when you do it digitally, remember to save often just in case like your program crashes or something. Cause uh, losing all that progress, the corrections I made, um, that's what would cause me to procrastinate and um, put aside the work and come back like a week later. Uh, yeah, so just remember to save often. Yeah, so now here I'm starting the screen tone process and this is what I like about Medibang Paint, Medibang Paint Pro. Uh, it has a nice selection tool, like a a wide selection tool, magic wand tool, whatever you want to call it. And then it has like a manual brush selection tool, which I really like. And the cool thing about that brush is that you could use different like brush shapes for a selection tool. So you can get a lot of cool effects with that. But yeah, basically I add screen tone to the clothing of my characters because uh, doing that traditionally with a nib pen would be very difficult. Uh, and yeah, I just feel like adding screen tones here, it makes it look cooler and just more, I guess. And yeah, I could add screen tones to the physical paper like the traditional way of adding screen tones, like using screen tone sheets, but that process would take a longer time than honestly just using the selection brush tool and adding screen tones digitally. And uh, you can see right here, I'm, I'm pulling up previous pages from my previous book as reference to look at the characters' um, screen tones on their clothing. Uh, you just wanted to stay consistent, I guess, but it can vary. Does not vary too much. Like, if you can still tell it's the same character, you should be fine. So, yeah. Yeah, and if you're wondering the characters' names here, the guy to the left, his name is Penguin. The guy to the middle, his name is Curaso or Curaso, however you want to say. The guy to the right, his name is Parrot. And the guy in the back, the tall guy, his name is Owl. Yeah, and just like a quick uh, brief intro to the characters right here. Um, I guess you could consider them the protagonist, or whoa. I mean, depending on your view, but the antagonist of my story, uh, their goal is to find these certain individuals called ancient savages and they have this special chemical within their hearts that cures sicknesses. And that chemical is called Purple Catalyst. Uh, basically, they have to find these ancient savages and um, kill them, rip their hearts out, and salvage, harvest them, and then preserve the liquid in the hearts. The reason why they have to do that is because that liquid within their heart it's a, a cure for a certain disease. And there's a certain man called the Hyrendra, and he's a man who's caused chaos, brought destruction to the world. And basically like the gods of this world, they cursed him permanently, or not permanently, but they cursed him into this beast, which he can never use his powers to threaten the world again. But the doctors working with him, they get that cure and they're going to bring it back to him. 
which is going to come back even stronger than before. This story is going to be mad, just mad. And obviously, I know it's not perfect. My art's not perfect or whatever, but I'm just saying, like, screw it and just go and make and create because uh, at the end of the day you can always look back and reflect on your first works and see how much you improved from the first manga or works you've created and look back and reflect and just see all that growth that growth is like what's going to motivate you to create more and that's what motivates me to create more like manga, art, whatever, every day. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say thanks if you stayed this long. Because me personally, when I watch long time-lapse videos, um, I don't end up staying for the whole thing. But whoever stayed this long, um, I hope you found this video helpful. And if this was like your boost of motivation to push you to create your own manga or get back working onto your past projects uh, i am grateful i guess that i'm able to get people back on track and all that but yeah so here i'm just showing you guys um the finished product of the page i made so yeah thanks for watching and as always like comment and subscribe uh, if you found this video helpful, please share it with others who are doing the same thing or who are just curious about manga. Uh, I also want to say I am not a professional at this. I'm still very much an amateur. And um, if you want, leave a comment on if you want a tutorial on the tools I use or like just the story of Savage. If you want me to go more in depth about it, I can do a video on that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>